thanks for joining me. I'm Carla with Race to Walk, and today I'm going to be sharing with you five things I learned while editing Edition Words by George MacDonald. But before we get started, a little bit about this channel. Here we share good thoughts about good words, and on Fridays I host a live Bible study on Instagram at Race to Walk, and then I publish two videos a week. I publish a replay of that Bible study as well as a video about books. So if you're interested in either of those things, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications so you can get updates about new videos. So a couple weeks ago I shared that I was publishing an annotated edition of Edition of Warts by George MacDonald. And Edition of Warts refers to like just a bunch of odds and ends. And this is a collection of essays by George MacDonald. And the ones that are, um, well, that I'm most familiar with are his essays on imagination. The first time I read it, I was reading it for graduate school, and I don't think I read through all of the essays, just the ones that were assigned. But going through it and annotating the all of the essays is just, um, it's like my Bible study of the book of Job. It's really given me a deeper understanding of George MacDonald and his faith and just how he thought and saw the world. And so it's been a really fun experience. So I'm going to share with you now those five things that I learned from editing that. So the first thing I learned is that I need to read more. He references so many writers, um, both social commentators and philosophers and poets and authors that I have never even heard of before. And I used to think I was pretty well read. Obviously not. The second thing that I realized is that earlier writers seem to be more connected than what it seems like our writers are today. And, and that is true. They're connected in community as well as connected with the writers of the past. I think that um, a lot of times in some of our writers, you don't really see that as much. You may get a few references here or there, but um, generally I don't think there's the depth of connection to the greater community that you will see like in George MacDonald. So he was, he was friends with Tennyson. He quoted from, you know, earlier writers like, um, Francis Bacon, he quote, quotes a lot and you just see this progression of thought and this kind of collectiveness to the writing, even though they're not writing about the same things, those influences are really strong there. So the third thing that, I realized when I was um, annotating this book was just how important true virtue was to George MacDonald. And you do see this, I think you see this in his, um, I don't know what you call them, they were his, at the time, his contemporary romances, um, the, like the Scottish romances are the ones that have been republished like I think in the 80s or 90s by Michael Phillips, they kind of reworked them for a more modern reading, you, you see that there, that true virtue and, you know, being accountable to the light you've been given was important, but you see it really clearly in his princess fairy tales where, um, you know, his message is really that whether someone is like a true princess is, has to do with their inner character. And there's an essay in addition or it's called on polish that talks about this, that about, um, you know, revealing what's really there. And George MacDonald also quotes um, Samuel Coleridge a lot. And sometimes um, you know, what you'll notice about George MacDonald is that he summarizes things, ideas that Coleridge had. So Coleridge will write like maybe 10 letters and some essays on something. And then George MacDonald will give like a one sentence synopsis that kind of summarizes all of that that Coleridge is saying. Coleridge had a, um, some essays that were pretty similar to some of the things that George MacDonald was saying, was, and that they saw the inner person as the true value. And that's one of the things we talked about in the launch party for our issue on the ancients in an unexpected journal, and like how the ancients saw the true value and character of a man, um, that virtue is not really a thing until it's acted upon. So anyway, that was, uh, I think that was one thing that stood out to me and that's, I see as another real difference because it seems like today we are so divorced from like truth and reality is that we don't actually even realize what has true worth. 
The fourth thing that was very obvious to me from annotating a dish of words is that the George MacDonald believed that to be truly human was to be connected with God. And again, this is something that you see in his fairy tales um, that there's in one of the stories, uh, Curdie had the ability to hold a person's hand and he could sense what the, the person was turning into, whether they were a real human or whether they were turning into an animal. And at the end of the story, these not quite human beings had turned into the animals that they had been progressing to all this time. You see that in the Chronicles of Narnia too, where in Prince Caspian, there's some of the, the boys at the school turn into pigs, if you remember that. But anyway. And the fifth thing that was really obvious to me from annotating a dish of words is just how much uh, George MacDonald was grounded in his faith and how much he had to walk it out. He references the passage in the Gospels that talk about, you know, the lilies of the field, that God cares for them and God's care for the sparrow. And it wasn't only in the dish of words that this was a recurring theme, but also some of the other things I've read, like I have the a video of his sermon, um, Faith, Proof of, of the Unseen. He talks about that too. It's like, when faith is uh, trust that commits, that's how Donald Williams puts it in 95 Theses for a new reformation. And what George McDonald says, you have to walk it out and move forward. Um, he, if you've read about his life, he had to really learn how to put his trust in God. He was kind of done wrong by the church he was a pastor of. Um, he had a big family that he had to support. And, you know, he dealt with some betrayal in his life. And I think that... You know, just when you read his biography, you see that he had to learn how to put his faith in God and move forward. And you see that in his essays, too. So anyway, this is um, about an annotated edition of a dish of warts. It's going to be coming out later this month. So if you're watching this before the official launch, then be sure to take advantage of that. But those are the things I learned from a dish of warts, and I hope you pick up a copy and read it as well and let me know what you think. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.